Here's a question I'm hearing a lot more lately, and that is, should I take acromancia? If you don't know what I'm talking about, all that means is there's a microbe called acromancia mucinophila that occupies most people's gastrointestinal microbiome. So it wouldn't be uncommon for three, four, or five percent of the entire collection of species in your gastrointestinal microbiome to be comprised of this one species, acromancia mucinophila also sometimes called Verruca microbia, because that's the only member of that phylum, that large group. Uh, there's no others, just Acromancia mucinophila, so sometimes it's, 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 they go by the phylum name. But let's talk about Acromancia mucinophila. So there's growing evidence that this thing is important. It was discovered in 2001 by a Belgian group, and they've done some studies on this thing, and it's very interesting. People who are slender, for instance, and healthy have more acromancia than people who are obese and unhealthy, like type 2 diabetes, suggesting there may be an association or a relationship. Now, there's been a couple of studies in which they've given people acromancia, and they did indeed see very modest reductions in blood glucose and measures like hemoglobin A1c. In the original study, for instance, from a few years ago, there was about a 0.6 percent reduction in hemoglobin A1C, so a very modest reduction. Nonetheless, uh, this has gained a lot of attention as an alternative to diabetes medications, for instance, and maybe a modest improvement in weight loss. Well, what's the problem here? Well, several things. One, one of the companies commercializing this when they first came out with acromancia, uh, coupled with about five other species, we're charging about $196 for a month supply to get that very small reduction in blood glucose. So there's that. It's very expensive. And they've since reformulated it and reduced the price somewhat, but it's still a very expensive way to get a very minimal reduction in blood glucose and hemoglobin A1C. Another problem with acromancia is that most people already have acromancia. So estimates vary, but anywhere from 5 to 30% of people may not have it, but the rest of us do have it. And so why would you take acromancia if you already have it? Couldn't you just instead consume things that bloom acromancia? And that's a long list of things you can eat more of to bloom. Kind of like throwing cow manure in your garden. You're going to have more tomatoes, bigger tomatoes, etc. Same thing here. And among the factors that bloom acromancia in your GI tract, inulin, fructooligosaccharides, so that means either a powder in your coffee that you bought as a powder, or onions, garlic, shallots, other root vegetables. The oleic acid of extra virgin olive oil helps bloom acromancia. Hyaluronic acid, that very important fiber source from animal products, blooms acromancia. You can get more of it through a powder. You could eat brain, skin, and tongue. Also, <laughs> most people don't want to do that, so you can get it as a supplement. Other fibers, other factors in diet, the capsaicin in red peppers blooms acromancia. The astaxanthin carotenoid blooms acromancia. There's many things that bloom acromancia. In other words, if you have acromancia, you can consume things in your diet that bloom it further and increase it maybe to more than 5%, maybe 7%, something like that, that provides additional benefit, and you won't have to spend all that money to replace acromancia. Another reason, another thing to think about is in several studies, people who had no measurable acromancia at the start uh, did something such as a bariatric procedure or went on a weight loss effort, whatever, and acromancia appeared. Now, no one knows exactly how that works, but it's likely that it was present in very low numbers that were undetectable and likely sequestered in the mucus lining. That's where acromancia likes to live. Remember, acromancia, mucinophila, mucus lover, <laughs> mucinophila. So it's probably present at low numbers and it only shows when you do something that blooms this microbe. It could be all those things I listed in diet. It could be weight loss. Bar I hope you're not going to have a bariatric procedure, but nonetheless, any form of weight loss will help bloom acromancia. So uh, even if you had none or uh, presumably none to start with, so why take acromancia when you likely have it, even if it's undetectable? Another thing to be aware of is whenever you engage in a diet that lacks prebiotic fibers and other related compounds like polysaccharides, these are factors that nourish microbes. So the microbes of your gastrointestinal tract like fecalobacterium and lactospiracea and ruminic acacia and clostridia species, all those wonderful microbes need 
fibers, not cellulose like bran fiber, but fibers that you can't metabolize. You can ingest, but you can't metabolize so that bacteria get it. It could be the inulin fructooligosaccharides that I mentioned in onions, garlics, and shallots. It could be the galactooligosaccharides in legumes. It could be pectin. It could be any number of things. When you, do, when you have a diet, either a excessively strict ketogenic diet or carnivorous diet where you fail to get those fibers, multiple species that rely on those fibers die off. You know, if you don't feed your garden or you feed your dog or cat, they're going to die. Same thing here. You don't feed them, they die. Well, Acromantia mucinophila, mucus lover, uh, also likes fibers, but when deprived of fibers, it has the added ability to survive by feeding on human mucus, mucinophila. It will consume the mucus in your colon and in your small intestine, and it will inflame the intestinal wall. So, for instance, ulcerative colitis can be a result of this. When, you consume, when they consume the um, mucus barrier, it opens the floodgates to toxic breakdown products of bacteria. So endotoxemia goes up. And that's why people on these diets, while they enjoy upfront benefits in the first few months, Weight loss, reduction in waist circumference, reduction in triglycerides, rise in HDL, reduction in small LDL particles, reduction in blood glucose, reduction, and they think, wow, this is really working. And then about 18 or so months into it, they say, something's wrong. I'm now constipated. I'm regaining weight in my abdomen. My blood pressure is going back up. My blood glucose is going back up. Everything unwinds, and that's likely because of the overproliferation of acromantia. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, a healthy level of acromantia is someplace between 3 and 5% of all microbes in your GI tract. In this situation, where you're deprived of prebiotic fibers, and good species decline and acromantia overproliferate, you can have 18%. 24%, 36% of the entire gastrointestinal microbiome occupied by this one mucus-consuming species, and that is not good. It's not clear whether it's even reversible, so you don't want to put yourself in that situation to begin with because you can't regain all those species that are lost, probably. No one knows for a fact. So it's a dangerous situation. So that's a person. If you were on an excessive, if you made the mistake of going on an excessively strict carnivorous or ketogenic diet, and over-bloomed acromancia. Don't add acromancia, right? <laughs> That'd be stupid. You're adding uh, fuel to the fire, so don't do that. So how best to manage this question? What if you want some of the benefits of acromancia? And by the way, there's a recent study out of Belgium from the original group that discovered acromancia, the show that killed acromancia is almost as effective or is as effective when it comes to reducing metabolic measures like blood glucose as live acromancia. Downside, dead acromancia, of course, cannot take up residence. You want it to ordinarily put aside ketogenic and carnivorous issues, but ordinarily you want acromancia to take up residence. If you kill it first, it won't take up residence. So ideally it's live acromancia, but this is what I would do. <clears throat> Save yourself a lot of money and headache. Consume all those things, peppers, uh, hyaluronic acid, inulin FOS, and onions, garlic, shallots, and other root vegetables, a couple teaspoons in your coffee every month. Just do all those things to bloom acromancia, wait a few months, and do all the other things we do. Lots of fermented foods, restoration of important keystone species like lactobacillus rotari, lactobacillus gasseri, uh, maybe a commercial probiotic, maybe. Uh, and then, some point down the road, in a few months, do a stool analysis. Uh, all the stool plat testing platforms I know of test for acromancia or verruca microbia, right? And see if you've got a lot of it. If you don't, okay, maybe that's a situation, a unique situation that occurs occasionally where you might want to take some acromancia as a, as a probiotic. But if you have lots of acromancia, you don't need to take any more acromancia.